guys, this is Ron. So this is the fourth video in our series about rediscovering C. In video number three, uh, we were checking out a lot of the different data types. And in doing so, uh, we ended up printing, uh, you know, various sizes and things like that to the screen. So you saw a lot of different print statements or print F statements, uh, but we really didn't talk about um, what I was putting in the format string uh, for each of the different data types. So in this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. And while we're doing that, uh, we'll also talk a little bit about man pages. Uh, because for the printf function, um, you kind of need to understand how man pages are laid out in order to find the information that you need. So in front of you, I've kind of put together uh, a little cheat sheet uh, that I'll be uploading into the GitHub repository uh, for this course. And so hopefully it'll help you uh, remember how to get to this information or, you know, just hopefully you find it useful uh, in using the printf format strings and so on. Okay, so the first uh, basic command uh, I have here is man man. So it's basically getting the man page for uh, the man utility. And the reason I've done that is because if I were to tell you, well, we're going to be using the printf function and I need you to look up uh, what the uh, format string needs to look like for a uh, long integer, right? You might say, well, I'll just go look at the man page for that. Why not? And you'll do man print F. And you'll get something like this. And you'll kind of scroll down and you'll scroll a little bit more. And you're like, okay, yep, I'm in the right place. I'm seeing the percent symbols that, you know, print F uses. Um, but now I'm at the end of the man page and I never saw uh, really an entry for, you know, long integers and stuff like that. You know, what gives? Well, man pages are kind of laid out um, in various kind of layers. And I don't know the actual technical term for it. Uh, but what we'll find is there's layer one here is user commands. And so when we had gone into just man print F, it stopped at the first layer where it found print F. And so there is an actual print F uh, command uh, that can be used, right? So this is a user command, but this is not the print F function that we see inside of the C standard library. All right. So in order to get to that information, we have to recognize again, there's you know, multiple layers here. So if I do a man man, I get the manual page for the man utility. And so I can kind of slide down here a little bit and I'll look and see, okay, well, it wasn't layers. They were section numbers. Uh, but section one is those user commands, right? Section two are system calls, which we may see um, if we get into some lower level programming or or maybe in some of our debugging, we'll see uh, sim, uh, system calls. Uh, but then there's layer or section three, which are these library calls. And so this C standard library, those functions exist in this section, right? So we need to make sure that when we look for printf, we're looking inside of three, all right? So if we do a man three for printf, we do in fact, get the printf function, right? And I know that because, well, we've seen definitions like this, right? So the printf function takes in a format string and then, you know, various number of arguments afterwards. And so in our last video, we uh, gave it things like size of and then a variable, right? And then our format string was just like a percent uh, LU uh, or UL for unsigned long, right? So one, these manual pages uh, let us know exactly how we're supposed to call the function. But also, there's this nice little include. So remember in you know our previous videos, I had to do a pound include for stdio.h 
in order to use printf. And so this is telling me, hey, if you want to use the printf function, you have to do a pound include for stdio.h. Right? So super useful as you start learning more and more about uh, the standard library or C standard library and the functions that it holds. So we still need to figure out, okay, well, I want to present, uh, print out some variable. Well, I need to know that variable's type. And so if I slide down, eventually, uh, there's a lot of description here of various other portions that you can put, you know, zero, uh, zero you can zero pad some of these things. Um, you can uh, left adjust them with the dash. Uh, you can make sure that the positive or negative sign shows up in front of a, uh, of a number. You know, there's lots of different things that you can kind of include in here. Um, but again, we can, we're looking to see what do I need to put in order to uh, print out a long int. Well, an L goes for a long int. LL goes for a long, long int, right? So there's all sorts of different things that we can do. Now, they also have unsigned long, long int, which means more than likely we need to put a U in front of this. So when we were seeing UL, we were printing out an unsigned long. And you really just kind of have to read through here. And that those are the kind of things that you'll find. Is it talks about the various things you need to put. We had D for an integer when we were printing out um, the decimal version of a character. We used the percent D, right? So again, useful. And then we have our U here for unsigned. So we paired up U and the L from above and got an unsigned long, right? So you just kind of work through here and find the various uh, things that you need to put into that format string. F will be a double argument. Well, you can also use it for a float, right? So again, super useful, um, but had you not known that you had to type man three print F, you wouldn't have uh, gotten the library function uh, print F, right? So super useful. So the more and more um, we dig into C and its various uh, libraries, the more we'll visit these man pages because they're going to tell us uh, what header do I need to include and how is the function actually laid out, right? So super useful. So again, man3 got us that library call. Man2 would get us system calls. Man1, those are those user commands. But essentially, if I just type in man and something, it's going to stop at the first one it finds. So it'll search section one. If it doesn't find it, it'll search section two. It won't find it. It'll search section three and so on and so forth. So there are certain functions that don't exist in these previous ones. So like, uh, I think we looked at Sterlen in our last video. So if I just do a man of Sterlen, well, it didn't exist in sections one and two, but it did find it in section three. Right? So we automatically jumped to it. Tells us what we need to include in order to use it and what the function declaration looks like. So now we know how to call it. Right? So we're going to spend a lot of time or we're going to jump back and forth in a lot of different man pages as we go because the C standard library is documented fairly well uh, in the man pages. And so it's going to be very valuable to us going forward. All right. So again, we're using our man functions or our man utility, and we're going to specify section numbers uh, and the um, thing that we're looking for. Right. If we don't specify a section number, it's going to start at the beginning and it's going to work its way down until it hopefully finds one. Otherwise, it's just like man garbage, and it's just going to tell you, hey, no manual entry for garbage. Right. So too easy. All right. So we did our man three print F and we found some of our format strings. And so percent D we've seen already percent L 
I don't know if we saw that one directly, but we definitely saw percent UL for an unsigned long. We have percent F, which will work for both our float and double. We've already seen percent %C in order to print out a single character. One thing we haven't seen, because we haven't really talked about uh, C strings at all, um, but percent %S will print out a string, but that string needs to be null terminated. And we haven't really talked about the null character, but a null character is just the slash zero that we place at the very end of a of a character array which is you know really what a string is to mark the end of the string so when we use a percent s it's going to assume whatever we hand it has a null terminator character at the very end and if it doesn't it's just going to keep going through memory until it finally hits a null terminator character so you may end up printing out you know more than you actually bargain for but typically your strings are null terminated and you shouldn't have an issue with that we have our percent x which we haven't seen so far but this is one way in which we can print out the hexadecimal representation of a number we also have a percent p so as we start talking about pointers this is one uh, method that we're going to use in order to print the memory address that is stored in a pointer, right? And we'll, we'll definitely get into those at a, at a later point. But again, those are some very common uh, format strings that you'll see. Now I did mention some character constants. So as we're um, building our format strings, uh, we have already seen slash n which is the new line character. This is how I'm uh, basically dropping back, dropping down to that next line. We also have a slash R, which is a carriage return, which I think just brings you back to the front of the line. So one thing you'll see on a Windows system is you'll see slash N and slash R paired up quite a bit. One of them brings you back to the front of the line, and then the next one drops you to the next line. So you'll see a lot of slash n slash r or slash r slash n. I can't remember, you know, typically what the order is, but on a Windows system, you'll you'll see that quite a bit. On a Unix or POSIX system like Linux, you'll typically only see slash n. But we could also use things like slash t to specify a tab. We have a slash V for a vertical tab. I haven't used that too much, but there may be times maybe you figure out a way to build a, a cool uh, chart of some sort, and so you're inserting vertical tabs. I don't use slash O very often because I very rarely specify an octal value. Octal values look something like that, where um, each number can only go from zero up to seven, right? So it's a total of eight digits, whereas binaries, you know, has zero to one, right? Uh, decimal is zero to nine, right? So, you know, whatever. Um, in the old days, you may have seen more octal kind of stuff. Uh, I haven't uh, seen it much, but what I have seen is a lot of slash X. So. You know, maybe you're specifying an actual hexadecimal value. Um, so this, that's wrong right there. Hexadecimal values are typically specified with two digits. Um, each, digit, each digit is actually four uh, bits. And so when you add these together, it's eight bits, which is one byte. So this slash X and a number is actually specifying one byte as a hexadecimal value. Um, I'm thinking maybe I just hit too many things there, but whatever. And then our last one is slash U. And so with some of the newer systems that you'll see, um, they'll use Unicode characters instead of ASCII characters. So in our last video, we printed out the ASCII chart um, and saw that you know it ranges from zero um, to uh, 127 
and that was good enough for standard English um, you know, alphabets. However, there are other languages out there with other characters, and so uh, a new standard was set, and Unicode uh, came out to be able to open up and, and use additional characters. And so you may see slash U and like four numbers afterwards, and they're specifying the Unicode value um, for something, right? And maybe it's um, a character, maybe it's an emoji, you know, you, you name it. There's all sorts of different things out there, and they're identified by their Unicode value um, because they've exceeded what, you know, standard ASCII uh, can provide. So that's pretty much it for printf and the use of man pages. Um, there are info pages, um, and so sometimes you'll get additional information on those. Um, so info, I don't know if printf's in there. Well, okay, so printf is in there, um, but it's probably not, it's probably the printf command, not necessarily the printf function. But the cool thing about info pages is you know, some of these links, you know, as you slide up and down, uh, it'll take you to different places. So you can kind of arrow down and hit enter on one. I don't find that I use this nearly as much as uh, I do, um, that I do for man pages. But again, you may find additional uh, information here. Um, like I said, I just tend to, to gravitate more towards the man pages. Okay, well let's go ahead and um, end it here. We saw a bunch of printfs in our uh, last video um, and we will see lots of printfs uh, going forward, but I figured you know a little bit shorter video uh, is, is good and uh, I covered the information that uh, I wanted to. So I hope you found this uh, useful. I will definitely be pushing this up to uh, the GitHub repository so you can take a look at it uh, and hopefully it serves as a good reference. Thanks for watching. Bye.